Hey everyone, this is Mike and in this video we're going to be talking a bit about the ranged weapons in Monster Hunter World. Now, going into Iceborne, all of these weapons didn't really change all that much. I think the bow is the only weapon out of all three that actually got a new move, but one of the really good quality of life changes that came to these weapons is the fact that you can now craft both the coatings for the bow as well as all the different ammo types for the bow guns immediately as well. Back in base game you could only craft the ammo one at a time which was incredibly annoying and basically put me off of playing bowgun altogether. But now in Iceborne there is an option where you can choose to either craft one ammo at a time or to just craft the maximum amount of ammo possible. And it actually made it so that I was very intrigued in trying to check out these bowguns now as well because bow is a weapon I played quite a bit back in base game. It was probably my most used weapon with charge blade coming in as a close second um, because charge blade is something that I started playing quite a bit at end game. But bow is something that I played a lot during the story for like the second half of the story because I started out with insect blade. But um, bow has always been a weapon that for certain monsters I would always go back to. And now in Iceborne, once I basically reached endgame as well, I quickly switched over from Charge Blade back to the bow, once that I got that Silver Raffalo set, because it is a very powerful bow gear set. And it was incredibly fun to start playing around with it again. Now, of course, when you're playing ranged, you have some pros and cons. The pros, of course, are the fact that you're a ranged weapon, so you can just hit the monster from a lot of different angles and distances. Whereas if you're playing a melee weapon, you might sometimes just be running after the monster, like something like, for example, a Tigrex or a Largakuga. They just run out of your range and you just stand there trying to catch up with them. Whereas if you're playing a ranged weapon, it's a lot easier to hit them. Now, of course, when you're playing a ranged weapon, you do have to keep two things in mind. First of all is critical distance. This is basically an indicator to make it so that ranged isn't too powerful, meaning that you can be out of range, in range, but not necessarily going to be dealing a lot of damage, and then at critical distance, where you're going to be dealing the most damage possible. And you always want to try and be in that critical range distance. And this will vary depending on which coating you use when you're using a bow. Um, although for bow coatings don't really affect gameplay all that much, I think close range coating is the only one that really changes your critical distance. And it also doesn't change the actual gameplay of the bow, like your attacks stay the same. And when it comes to the bow guns, that's where ammo types really will change up the way that you play the bow gun, as well as at which distance that you want to play from the monster as well. So it's quite interesting down there as well. Together with just the sheer variety that there is in different bowguns when it comes to recoil patterns, reload patterns, magazine sizes, which ammo types are available on each bowgun as well, and then of course you have the different types as well. Like when you look at the light bowgun, you do have some pretty decent damage options, like for example in the gameplay that you're going to be seeing, I am using a rapid fire spread 2 build, which does pretty decent damage for a light bowgun, but for the most part light bowgun is more focused around a supportive playstyle, whereas something like the heavy bowgun it's much slower and much less mobile, but it does pack a big, like, uh, does pack a punch. So there is kind of that trade-off that you make. Of course, I'm somebody that's always liked more mobile playstyle since I am used to playing bow quite a bit. So light bowgun does kind of fit my playstyle more. Of course, you're taking the trade-off that because you're so mobile, you're going to be dealing less damage. You also have a much smaller clip size, but that is kind of not too bad of a thing because you do have evading reload, which is something that you don't have on the heavy bowguns. But then on the other hand, if you play heavy bowgun, you're going to have a much bigger magazine size, you're going to be dealing a whole lot more damage. And if you want to, and if the bowgun does support it, you can also be an incredibly tanky ranged weapon as well. Because the big problem with ranged weapons is that when you get hit, you're going to be taking so much more damage than if you were playing a melee weapon. That is one of the big drawbacks to playing ranged. If you get hit, you might just get one shot, especially when you're fighting tempered monsters, for example in the heavy bowgun uh, clip that I've got rolling on as well at some point in the video, I'm fighting a tempered Tigrex. And as long as I am hiding behind my shield and I'm playing very defensive, that is where the Tigrex is going to do literally zero damage to me, because Loyal Thunder is an incredibly strong defensive weapon if you do decide to run those shield mods and the guard up and the guard uh, decorations as well. I, I don't think I have guard up actually, I don't think I even have a guard up decoration at this point, but I do have guard 5 and 3 shields on it. But the thing is that you're trading off a lot of damage to be that defensive walking fortress, but on the other hand, the Loyal Thunder still packs quite a punch, does a lot of damage, even with all of those defensive decorations and mods applied to the weapon. So 
Royal Thunder is maybe a little bit too strong. I'm not a huge fan of the gameplay where you're just literally hiding behind your shield and you just deal damage whenever it's possible. But for some of these very annoying monsters, like for example the Tigrex, Tigrex is a monster that I really do not like because uh, he just like flies around way too much and that's where this heavy bowgun playstyle is very strong. But usually whenever I play other monsters I gravitate towards the bow because that is definitely my favorite weapon. It's a very mobile weapon and even though it is very simple to pick up it basically only has two attacks because the other two attacks it's four attacks in total. Um, but a thousand dragons you don't really use and oh no I mean dragon piercer you don't really use and a thousand dragons you use very little as well you usually use it as like a wake up or maybe if the monster is exhausted and you've got like a weak point and you've got some good slinger ammo loaded so the scenario in which you would use that thousand dragons is not necessarily as big as you usually doing your normal like um, dash dancing and that kind of stuff but it's a very fun and active playstyle which is why I like bow so much and then when it comes to the light bow gun you're still very active as well but you might be not be doing as much damage but you do have these cool supportive actions as well like the wyvern ammo that you can just put down as little mines or when the monster gets knocked out you just place in the front of his face to do some extra wake up damage as well or of course strategically place them in positions where you would be able to hit them or trip a monster or something like that and then also having access to that paralyze ammo sleep ammo that kind of stuff to basically create openings for not only you but the rest of your team to do a lot of damage as well and then when it comes to the heavy bogan it's basically the complete opposite of this very active playstyle where you're going to be incredibly slow, you're walking very slow, your dodge animation takes ages, you stowing away your weapon to heal or something like that takes ages as well. So you need to be a lot more defensive in your playstyle and a lot more careful. But of course it depends on the bogan that you want to run as well. In this video I am running the Loyal Thunder with complete defensive setup just because I wanted to use it on certain monsters that I do tend to struggle with from time to time. So I can just be that incredibly defensive tank, almost, I guess you could say. But when it comes to playing an offensive playstyle with bow guns, that's totally possible as well. Like slap on some like piercer rounds instead of like the spread, because spread wants you to be incredibly up close and personal with the monster. But when you, for example, run pierce, you can be a lot further away. Stickies, for example, is something that you can do as well, where you don't even need to be like in critical distance at all, because your damage is going to come from the explosion, not the initial hit of the sticky. Um, you've got other stuff like cluster bombs and such as well, which I think you can't run clusters on light bowgun. I think that's only for heavy bowgun. But I haven't played around with clusters too much because I don't really like using clusters in multiplayer because it just basically fucks over your other teammates. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of clusters, but for solo play they're pretty strong. If you do want to build around it, I know my friend Rosen does. So that's pretty much the three different options that you have available. You have the bow, which is a very active playstyle. It's the most risky out of the three, I would say, because you don't really have many defensive options. And even though you are very mobile, the attacks of the bow itself do have quite a long animation. So you do have to be a little bit careful here or there where you're going to be using those spread shots. And you'll often find, or at least I find myself often just opting for the uh, rapids because they do have that very short animation and allow you to dash out again quite quickly as well. And you have the light bowgun. A lot more mobile, probably the mo most mobile out of all three. Smaller clip size, but you do have that evading reload. Can deal a decent amount of damage, but it's mostly towards that supportive weapon with those status ammo types as well. This is also a pretty decent one if you want to go for some elemental type build, um, because elemental ammo and status ammo is much better on light bowguns than it is on heavy bowguns. And then last but not least, of course, you have the heavy bowgun, a much slower paced playstyle can be incredibly defensive if you want it to be, if not you can just make it into a strong powerhouse but you do got to be really careful when it comes to playing defensively because of course you're not going to be just be able to dodge out of danger as easily as you would with the bow or the light bowgun. So those are pretty much the three ranged options that are available in Monster Hunter. I do think with the changes in Iceborne, bow is pretty fun to play, it's always been really fun and then now making it so that ammo is so much easier to craft or at least so much more friendly to craft, I think that the bowguns are also going to be weapons that I'm going to be using a fair bit going forward forward because this spread to rapid fire build is incredibly fun to play around with i do really want to try and get maybe like a sticky build going for ko's in multiplayer and then maybe some pierce build as well for like fighting those bigger monsters like xenojiva or sharai all that stuff like that so that's pretty much going to be it for me i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one